Saint Gregory VII, born Hildebrand of Savannah, was pope from the 22nd of April 1073 to his death in 1085. Gregory VII was beatified by Pope Gregory XIII in 1584 and canonized in 1728 by Pope Benedict XIII. One of the great reforming popes, he is perhaps best known for the part he played in the investiture controversy, his dispute with Henry IV, Holy Roman Emperor that affirmed the primacy of papal authority and the new canon law governing the election of the Pope by the College of Cardinals. He was also at the forefront of developments in the relationship between the Emperor and the Papacy during the years before he became Pope. He was the first Pope in several centuries to rigorously enforce the Western Church's ancient policy of celibacy for the clergy and attack the practice of simony. He thrice excommunicated Henry, who in the end appointed Antipope Clement III to oppose him in the political power struggles between the Catholic Church and his empire. Hailed as one of the greatest of the Roman pontiffs after his reforms proved successful, Gregory VII was, during his own reign, despised by some for his expansive use of papal powers. The Pope, having been such a prominent champion of papal supremacy, his memory was evoked on many occasions in later generations both positively and negatively, often reflecting later writers' attitude to the Catholic Church and the papacy. Benno of Meissen, who opposed Gregory VII in the investiture controversy, leveled against him charges such as necromancy, torture of a former friend upon a bed of nails, commissioning an attempted assassination, executions without trials, unjust excommunication doubting the real presence of the Eucharist, and even burning the Eucharist. This was eagerly repeated by later opponents of the Catholic Church, such as the English Protestant John Fox. Joseph McCabe describes Gregory as a rough and violent peasant, enlisting his brute strength in the service of the monastic ideal which he embraced, in contrast the noted historian of the 11th century H.E.J. Cowdery writes, Gregory VII was surprisingly flexible, feeling his way and therefore perplexing both rigorous collaborators and cautious and steady-minded ones. His zeal, moral force, and religious conviction, however, ensured that he should retain to a remarkable degree the loyalty and service of a wide variety of men and women. Biography Early career Gregory was born as Ildebranda di Soana, in Savannah, in the county of Grosto, now southern Tuscany, central Italy. He was said to be of humble origins. According to Johann Georg Gestor, his birth name was Hildebrand Bonisi, and he was the son of a blacksmith. As a youth he was sent to study in Rome, where, according to some unconfirmed sources, his uncle was abbot of a monastery on the Aventine Hill. Among his masters were the erudite Lawrence, Archbishop of Amalfi, and Johannes Gratianus, the future Pope Gregory VI. When the latter was deposed by Holy Roman Emperor Henry III and exiled to Germany, Hildebrand followed him to Cologne. According to some chroniclers, Hildebrand moved to Cluny after Gregory's death, which occurred in 1048. His declaration to have become a monarchist in Cluny must not be taken literally. He then accompanied Abbot Bruno of Toul to Rome. There, Bruno was elected Pope, choosing the name Leo IX and named Hildebrand as deacon and papal administrator. Leo sent Hildebrand as his legate to Tours in France in the wake of the controversy created by Berengar of Tours. At Leo's death, the new pope, Victor II, confirmed him as legate. While Victor's successor Stephen IX sent him and Anselm of Lucca to Germany to obtain recognition from the Empress Agnes de Poitou, Stephen died before being able to return to Rome. But Hildebrand was successful, he was then instrumental in overcoming the crisis caused by the Roman aristocracy's election of an anti-pope. Benedict X, who, thanks also to Ains's support, was replaced by the Bishop of Florence, Nicholas II, with the help of 300 Norman knights sent by Richard of Viversa, Hildebrand personally led the conquest of the castle of Galeria Antica, where Benedict had taken refuge. 
Between 1058 and 1059, he was created Archdeacon of the Roman Church, becoming the most important figure in the papal administration. He was again the most powerful figure behind the election of Anselm of Luca the Elder as Pope Alexander II in the papal election of October 1061. The new pope put forward the reform program devised by Hildebrand and his followers. In his years as papal advisor, Hildebrand had an important role in the reconciliation with the Norman Kingdom of Southern Italy, in the anti-German alliance with the Pateria movement in Northern Italy and, above all, in the introduction of a law which gave the cardinals exclusive rights concerning the election of a new pope, pontificate. Election to the papacy Pope Gregory VII was one of the few popes elected by acclamation. On the death of Alexander II which was on 21 April 1073, as the obsequies were being performed in the Lateran Basilica, there arose a loud outcry from the clergy and people, Let Hildebrand be Pope, Bless Peter has chosen Hildebrand the Archdeacon, later, on the same day. Hildebrand was conducted to the Church of San Pietro in Vincoli and elected Pope there in legal form by the assembled cardinals, with the due consent of the Roman clergy, amid the repeated acclamations of the people. It was debated at the time, and remains debated by historians, whether this extraordinary outburst in favor of Hildebrand by clergy and people was wholly spontaneous or could have been the result of some preconcerted arrangements. Certainly, the mode of his election was highly criticized by his opponents. Many of the charges brought may have been expressions of personal dislike, liable to suspicion from the very fact that they were not raised to attack his promotion until several years later, but it is clear from his own account of the circumstances of his election that it was conducted in a very irregular fashion, and that the forms prescribed by the law of 1059 were not observed. Above all, the requirement of Pope Nicholas II that the Holy Roman Emperor be consulted in the matter was ignored. However, what ultimately turned the tide in favor of validity of Gregory VII's election was the near universal acclaim of the Roman people. In this sense, his election hearkened back to the earliest centuries of the Church of Rome, regardless of later canonical legislation. Gregory VII's earliest pontifical letters clearly acknowledge this fact, and thus help diffuse any doubt about his election as immensely popular. On the 22nd of May 1073 he received priestly ordination, and became Pope on the 30th of June when he was ordained a bishop. In the decree of election, those who had chosen him as Bishop of Rome proclaimed Gregory VII, a devout man a man mighty in human and divine knowledge, a distinguished lover of equity and justice, a man firm in adversity and temperate in prosperity, a man, according to the saying of the Apostle, of good behavior, blameless, modest, sober, chaste, given to hospitality, and one that rules well his own house, a man from his childhood generously brought up in the bosom of this mother church and for the merit of his life already raised to the archidiaconal dignity. We choose then, they said to the people, our Archdeacon Hildebrand to be Pope and successor to the Apostle, and to bear henceforward and forever the name of Gregory. Gregory VII's first attempts in foreign policy were towards a reconciliation with the Normans of Robert Giscard. In the end the two parties did not meet after a failed call for a crusade to the princes of northern Europe, and after obtaining the support of other Norman princes such as Landolfi of Benevento and Richard I of Capua, Gregory VII was able to excommunicate Robert in 1074. In the same year Gregory VII summoned a council in the Lateran Palace, which condemned simony and confirmed celibacy for the church's clergy. These decrees were further stressed under menace of excommunication the next year. In particular, Gregory decreed in this second council that only the Pope could appoint or depose bishops or move them from sea to sea, an act which was later to cause the investiture controversy. Vestments writing in Lo Servator Romano, Agostino Paravicini Bagliani says that the popular belief that street 
Pius V was the first pope to wear the white cassock as inaccurate. Instead, writes Bagliani, the first document that mentions the Pope's white cassock dates from Gregory X in 1274. The first Pope to be solemnly invested with the red mantle immediately after his election was Gregory VII, the scholar added. Noting that traditionally, from the moment of his election the Pope put on vestments of two colors.